Hello everyone. In our last video, we talked about the installation of WDS and we went through the lab installing the WDS server. Now, after you have installed the WDS server, you need to configure that server. One of the first two things that you want to do is to install the install.wem file. You want to add that to the server. And you want to also add the boot.wem file to the WDS server. Now, before we add these two files, we want to talk a bit about these two files. Let's start with the install.wem. The install.wem is really the operating system. You're going to find this file within the software folder in the sources directory. You will also find the boot.wim file in the sources directory. If you wanted to deploy a 32-bit system, then you would have to use the 32-bit install.wim file. And if you wanted to deploy a 64-bit system, you would have to install a 64-bit install.wim file. What about the boot.wim? With the boot.wim file, you must use a 64-bit boot.wim if you needed to deploy a 64-bit install.wim file. However, you can use 32-bit boot.wim to deploy both 32-bit and 64-bit install.wim. That means you can use one boot.wim to deploy multiple install.wim files. Look out for that question in your exam. But what is the difference between the install image and the boot image and why do we really need to have those files well the install.wim speaks for itself because the install.wim is the operating system for example if you want to deploy server 2012 let's say you want to deploy multiple copies of server 2012 or for that for that matter Windows 10 or Windows 8, you need to first get that install.wim file, which is the operating system, and add it to the WDS server. The install.wim can also be an image file from your reference computer. For example, you might have a reference computer on which you have already installed the operating system and all the other applications that you want your client to use. And what you then would do is to make a copy of that reference computer. That copy that you make is a WIM file, a Windows image file, and it is called the install.wim file. Now, the boot WIM. Now, you cannot create and install image of Windows while Windows is running. So you need to boot your computer using a Windows pre-installation environment. And this is where your boot file comes in. The boot image is a bootable copy of the Windows pre-installation environment that it automatically will contact the WDS server over the network when the computer boots up. So you need that boot file. That boot file, you're going to use that boot file to create what we call a capture image. And the capture image is a bootable copy of the Windows pre-installation that allows you to copy the hard disk of the reference computer. 
So that, that capture image that you have to create, you have to right click on the right click on the boot.wim file within the WDS console and create that capture image. Because that capture image is going to be used to make a copy of your reference computer. We also have another type of boot image called the discover image. And the discover image is a bootable copy of the Windows pre-installation environment that allows you to copy the reference computer as a WIM file. But unlike the capture image, the discover image is booted via DVD or a USB key. So uh, remember, after we install the WDS role on the server, you need to add these two WIM files that you will get from the sources folder, install.wim, which contains the operating system, and boot.wim, which is the boot image, a bootable copy of the Windows pre-installation environment. Now we are going to go through the lab, adding the install.wim and boot.wim image. Pay close attention because you're going to have to do it for your lab practice. We want to begin configuring the WDS server because we need to add the install.wim file and we also need to add the boot.wim file. To begin, we want to click on Tools, and we want to select Windows Deployment Services from the drop-down menu. In the Windows Deployment Services screen, we want to expand servers. And then you can see that the server has a yellow icon. It means that it needs to be configured, has not been configured. So we want to right click on the server and we want to select configure server. At the before you begin screen, you're reminded again of the requirements that you need for Windows deployment services. The server has to be a member of an Active Directory domain or a domain controller. If it is that your server supports standalone mode, it can be configured without having a dependency on Active Directory. You need to make sure that there's an active DHCP server on the network. And the reason for this is because Windows Deployment Services uses a pre-boot execution environment which relies on DHCP for IP addresses. You also need an active DNS server on the network. Then you need to make sure that your server has an NTFS file system partition on which you can store your images. You want to click next to continue. And here, you get the choice of whether you want integration with Active Directory or you want a standalone server. And we're going to leave it at the default integrated with Active Directory. And we want to click Next to continue. At this point, we want to enter the path to the remote installation folder. And you can browse and you can change the path. But if you don't change the path, you will see that whatever your path is here, a folder called remote install will be created. And this is a folder that will contain the boot images, the install images, the PSC boot files, the all the Windows Deployment Service Management tools. So when you are choosing this partition, make sure that the partition is large enough to hold all of the images that you want to use. Another thing about this partition is 
that it must be NTFS. You should try not to use the system partition. If possible, if you're working in a test environment or in a class environment, you can get away with using the system partition for the storage of those images. But if you're in a production environment, you don't want to use the system partition. We want to click Next to continue. And we are using the system partition since we are in a class situation. So we get a warning. Are we going to click yes? Now, here we want to make some choices. Now, if you are installing your WDS role on a server that already has a DHCP running, on the server, then DHCP and WS listens on the same port. So you need to have these ticked off. Do not listen on DHCP and DHCP version 6 ports. Configure DHCP options for proxy DHCP. So if you have, if you're installing, remember, if you are installing your WDS server on a server that's already a DHCP server, you're going to have to have this ticked off. Do not listen on DHCP and DHCP ports and configure DHCP options. So we want to click next to continue. Here you have a choice how you want your client computers to respond. Your first option here is do not respond to any client computers. That means that you want to set up your WDS server, but when the client computer comes on or is turned on, you don't want the images to start coming down to the client as yet. The second option, respond only to known client computers. That means that only client computers that are a part of your domain the image will come down only to those. The third one says, reply to all client computers known and unknown. So for this one, if you're going to choose that one, you're going to have to, let's choose it first, see here. You're going to have to say, require administrative approval. Why do we do that? Well, let's look at the option. Respond to all client computers. So all the client computers that are part of your domain, those images will come down to those computers. The unknown computers, the computers that are not part of your domain, they are actually going to go into a, a container on your server. And it's the pending device container. And what you need to do as an administrator is to go to that container, right click on that computer and approve it so that the image will also come down to that computer. So once the computer is unknown, it goes into the pending device container and you have to manually go to that container, right click on the computers, or if it's one computer, right click on the computer and approve it so that it will be added to the list of pre-stage computers. By pre-stage objects, we mean computer objects that are created within Active Directory domain services before the operating system is installed. These are the objects or the devices that will boot from the network by using Windows deployment services. We want to click Next to continue. And you can see that we're starting Windows deployment services. And we want to go ahead and click on Finish at this point. Now is the point where we need to add that install image. 
So to add the install image, we need to expand the server view here. And we can see the options. When you, uh, when you configure WDS, you will see install images, boot images, pending devices. Remember, we just talked about pending devices. And this is where you would have to open up pending devices and approve the unknown computers, those computers that were not joined to the domain. We're concerned here with the install images. So we need to get that install image. So we're going to right click on install images. And we can say add install image or we can say add image group. The reason why we might want to, to choose add image group is because we might want to put certain types of images in one group so that we can give permissions to that group. So we're going to go ahead and say add image group. And we're going to enter a name for the image group. We're going to enter the name for the group. I want to call the group WD Configure. We type WD Configure and press Enter. And you want to click on OK to continue. We now want to right click on that group, WD Configure. And we want to click add install image. We're going to browse for that image. So we're going to click on browse. And remember we said that the image was in the sources folder. So you can see the image here install.wim. We want to click on the install.wim image and click on open. So we see that the location for this image is eSources install.wim. We want to click on next to continue. Now remember we said that the install image is the operating system image. So you can see all the different images here and we only want one image so you need to choose the image that you want and we're going to be installing the 2008 R2 server therefore we need to deselect the others so we're going to click on each of them and deselect them all Because we only want the first one, the 2008 R2 standard. We want to click next to continue. And we see here the name of the image that we selected. If we want to change it, we can click back and change it. Click next to continue. And you see that the images. Well, the image that we chose was successfully added to the server. Then we want to click on finish. You can see the image on the right hand side. Windows Server X64 online. We now want to go and add the boot image. So we're going to click the boot image. And we can see that we already have some images already here that were created from the boot image. We want to right click and click on add boot image. We want to browse for that image. Select it from the list and click on open. 
the location again is the sources folder we want to click next to continue and here we have the image name we can change that name for a name that we want for our lab we're going to leave the name as is and you can also write a description for that name so you have a chance here to enter a name and a description for the image want to click on next to continue and next again to continue and the image would have been successfully added to the server we want to click on finish so we see that the image is added with other images remember that we can also create capture images and to in order to create the capture image which is the image that you're going to need that will actually make a copy of your reference image you would need to right click on that boot image to actually make the capture image to recap we configured the WDS server added the install image and added the boot image to the server this is the end of our session and i want to thank you for listening